In previous lessons, we've been talking about different variations of socialism and socialist ideas, and we've been mainly looking and focused at, um, or focused on, if should I say, on, on what we call the classical formulations of, of socialism. So we, we've been talking about the socialist traditions of Marx uh, and Engels, who, who really... Um, this this traditional understanding of socialism really they really kickstarted that idea. We then moved on to looking at um, some other thinkers such as um, Luxembourg, who is um, photographed here, by the way. And what we're going to do in this lesson is talk about some more modern formulations of socialism, and we're going to namely focus on the concept of social democracy. Now, social democracy, most would argue, is actually not what you would call socialism because social democracy um, believes in the existence of a capitalist state and that believes in the um, the the continuation of the capitalist state if you will or the capital or a capitalist economy which most people would argue if we think back to our last lesson some people would argue is fundamentally incompatible with any kind of understanding of socialism especially according to a Marx or, or, or Engels um, understanding of socialism um, the idea of capitalism and socialism co coexisting and being able to work together to um, lead to different um, objectives this is something that is fundamentally impossible however social democracy does come up with its own um, idea of um, of socialism it's primarily concerned not with the abolition of capitalism not with abolishing capitalism in any way but really with the reformation of capitalism so rather than just looking at capitalism noticing its flaws noticing its its problems and, and issues that exist and going the only way in which we should be able to um, survive as a society or, or improve as a society is to simply just uh, get rid of it and reform it and change it into a different um, system like socialism Social democracy is concerned with seeing and recognising the problems with capitalism, but recognising that reforming those problems are a better way, uh, is a better way of uh, achieving these equitable and just uh, outcomes for society. Pertinent examples of social democracy include the growth of government under post-war labour. So under the uh, government uh, of uh, Clement Attlee, we see um, a number of things take place, one of them being the nationalisation nationalization of key industries and also the introduction the growth or, or really the, the creation of the welfare state so the welfare uh, state obviously the most famous example of this is the creation of the national health service the national health service or the nhs for those um, who prefer their abbreviations and so we see the nationalisation of certain industries. What we mean by nationalisation is we mean we take an industry that is uh, originally in a, a, a privately owned um, uh, by, uh, by corporations, by companies and stuff, and we take that under to the control of the government. So instead of there being private companies that control different areas of the industry, we nationalise it and we make it so that the... Um, the, the, that the government controls this industry. The very good example of this is comparing the healthcare system in the United States to that of the healthcare system in the United Kingdom. Healthcare in the United States is ran um, by um, mostly by private corporations and private entities and private insurance companies, for example, whereas the health service in the United Kingdom, the NHS, is run by the government and is run by uh, and funded by the government as well, paid through taxes, for example. Support for ideas such as social democracy also became popular with the introduction of Keynesian economics. Okay, now Keynesian economics is a theory of macroeconomics. Okay, macro. Let's just make the distinction here. Uh, so, um, so macro, macroeconomics is the study of economies. So, study of economies. So, for example, the UK economy or the world economy, that's what a macroeconomic, uh, macroeconomic study is. And then, on the other hand, you've got microeconomics. And this studies, this studies entities within an economy. So, within, within an economy. So, for example, 
the study of my, uh, macroeconomics would be, for example, the study of the UK economy, looking at things like employment, unemployment, inflation, fiscal policy, monetary policy, etc., etc. Or you could talk about global economy, things like trade policy, investment policy, etc., etc. And then microeconomics looks at the entities within an economy, so um, businesses within an economy, how businesses operate, how markets work within an economy, um, how um, the regulation of things such as monopolies, for example. So there's the distinction between the two. And Keynesian economics is a theory within this macro tradition, this macroeconomics, that states that government spending and progressive taxation okay, can be used to provide for economic growth. So government spending on things such as welfare uh, and nationalised industries, for example, and that we can have a progressive taxation system uh, where we have um, you know, uh, higher taxation for those who earn more money effectively. And these can provide for an economic growth uh, and provide for um, greater economic justice as well within society. Social democracy rejects the pejorative Marxist view that the life of the worker is poor. So obviously in, under a Marxist tradition we see the idea of the exploitation of one's labour leading to the alienation of the worker which develops into class consciousness among the working class, among the proletariat which should eventually lead to the revolution and the overthrowing of uh, and, the, uh, and, the, and the seizing of the means of production. This is a quite a pejorative understanding of the life of the worker, the quite a negative understanding of it. However, in the in the uh, in the modern world where living standards have substantially increased, uh, according to a social democratic um, system, this is not to be the case. Rather than supporting the common ownership of the means of production, social democracy supports what is known as a mixed economy. So, a mixed economy again uh, focuses on this privatization versus nationalization um, uh, distinction so on the one hand you can have a completely privatized economy okay privatized economy okay and then on the other hand of the spectrum we can have a completely nationalized nationalized economy now the distinction between the two under a privatised system, the government has no control over any industries or any markets at all. So everything would be in control of private corporations. We'd have what is known as a free market. Okay, We'd have a free market with, with no government controls or very few government controls over, uh, over the economy. On this side of the spectrum, we have a nationalised economy where the government controls every industry or all industries. Uh, a good example of a, a, a fully nationalised economy um, could be the... Uh, our understanding of the USSR to an extent. Now, a mixed economy is one that sits in the middle and we have a mixed economy here and the understanding of the mixed economy, um, if I can spell, our understanding of a mixed economy is one whereby we have a, a, a mixture of some private industry and then there is some nationalised industry. You'll notice that the United Kingdom is actually a mixed economy because we have a lot of uh, private industry and private markets and we also have um, a lot of nationalised industry and nationalised markets. So we can see the distinction between the two. A system whereby some industries ought to be nationalised and some ought to remain privatised. That's the idea of a mixed economy. And taking all these principles and putting them into practice, social democracy fundamentally aims to achieve greater equality and social justice. Now, this is ultimately the idea of, of any political system, of any idea in, within political systems. However, according to social democracy, the abolition of capitalism is not the way forward in being able to achieve this goal. It's the reform of capitalism, the introduction of a Keynesian system where we have government spending and progressive taxation, we have the improvement of living standards um, and we also have the support of a, of a mixed economy where we have some nationalisation, we have some um, common ownership um, markets and then we have some privatisation where we have some private markets and some free market areas as well.